From my last Bitcoin analysis video, we were able to identify very, very clearly from the daily RSI chart that there is not going to be a V-shaped correction and that any move or bounce from the 25.5 lows is going to take about eight to 10 days bare minimum to get back above 32K if it gets back above 32K. And we specifically labeled that idea as still improbable, but it's the absolute most bullish case. Eight to 10 days to finally get above 32K. And I gave out all the other more probable options to that, which involve going sideways or floating down or breaking down out of this channel. Let's review a, a three quick tidbits from that video before we rock and roll in today's analysis. Therefore, let's think of something more realistic. If it does come up here, it's probably going to get rejected, fall back into this channel, come at least to the bottom of the point of control or the bottom of the range, regroup, and try it all again. All right, so take a look at that. I made that video where this candle was being pointed at right here. So take a look at this. See that black triangle? And roughly, let's say, some a little bit of distance from the edge of it. And look at my drawing. About the same thing, right? So not, not a horrible guess. However... I gave all the reasons in that video, and it's. It, I'm not saying this because, like, oh, look at me, I drew a line and it happened. No, it's. I want you to realize how my analysis was allow me to guess that as one of the top two most probable things to happen. I was able to piece it together that it was both going to hit that box and then come back down to the bottom of the point of control at least, and that is what's happening right now. And it's very important to watch that video so you can see me piece that together, how I knew it was by far the second most probable thing to happen. All right. And then, so because we don't have a probability to the upside and volatility looks like it's going to chill out, what do you think that means? It's going to bounce around these lines almost perfectly for quite a while. All right. Eight to 10 days bare minimum, and it could be much longer. And let me go to it another. It does break out within eight to 10 days. I think it's going to hit this line. Because that's when the neck, this pink line, which is the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders over here, that's when it hits the top of this channel. And when two important lines cross, price likes to get sucked into it. And that. All right. And that is the absolute most bearish case possible. So let me zoom out. We are looking at a, again, most bullish case possible. It's going to be uh, actually about May 22nd at the, what I would guess the earliest, that 32K can be broken out of. Because of the, how I covered in that video. The daily RSI, which I haven't shown in this video, you're going to have to go here. You can actually go ahead and check it out with this link here if you don't want to wait for me to link you to it at the end. And there are tags in that video. You can use those tags uh, to go straight to the daily RSI part as well. If you missed that video, then you don't have to spend the 30 minutes. You can come back here. All right. So we can I already identify this is going to take eight to 10 days bare minimum. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you a quick trick. Now that we know the gist of what are our top three most probable things to happen is float sideways float sideways and down or break down. And then perhaps the fourth most probable is that bullish case. I think it's the fourth most probable, right? And that video established all those. With that, I'm, this video, I'm going to show you a just a super simple trick. It's similar to my Jenga uh, video. It's using higher low structures on the one hour chart. So at any moment, you can recalibrate the percentages that you are applying to which among these four is most likely? This has a 30% chance, a 20% chance, a 10% chance, so on and so forth. You can continue calibrating those, you know, every six to eight hours or so, every oscillation um, or mid oscillation of the one hour stochastics. You can start, depending on what price does, I'm going to show you a trick on how to, at any moment, recalibrate your percentage chances of each of these top four things happening. So let's go after it and let's get into these charts. <laughs> Again, I'm on the one hour chart, and if you wanted to go ahead and draw these this same channel that I have, the last video I gave you uh, the perfect opportunity to do that at the beginning of it, and I, I zoomed out so you can do that. Uh, so go ahead and uh, follow the link uh, to that uh, my last video if this if these channels are something you want to draw on your chart as well. What's going on here on the one hour chart? Take a look. What do you see from from here to here? What is happening when I ask you that question? There really is one best answer. Yes, Juan, you raised your hand. Very good. What was that? Yes, you are breaking higher low structure. 
So you had a low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, series of higher highs. And you and Bitcoin price has so this was the most recent higher low, right? Well, Bitcoin fell through it and made a lower high. So now it has a lower low and a lower high. It has established a confirmed downtrend on the one hour chart. Therefore, since it's in a downtrend, the statistical likelihood of it's literally likely over 50 percent likely that because it's established that and it's fresh in the move, right? That at least this line is going to be hit similar to how I mentioned in the video. It would hit this triangle and at bare minimum come down to the bottom of the point of control. And I said that roughly about right there. See how I circled that? That's the same thing. Boom, right here. Because of that, it's extremely like and this trick. I mean, it's just looking at the one hour chart. It's very powerful, simple structure. And I'm mixing two different types of structural analysis. You see these. Uh, this is a trading channel. So that's one type of structure. And the other structure is simple highs and lows. So because it broke the higher low structure, OK, from one type of structural analysis, my other structural analysis says this is going to be it. It's extremely, extremely likely. So let, let me maybe I didn't say that in a way that is um, is uh, clear because the higher low structure has been broken and now you have a lower low and lower high. You can automatically know that it's very likely that this next this this move here that's happening in these three hours, it's likely to go make a lower low to this low because you have a lower low and a lower high. And now the question is, how low will that lower low go? That's where the other structural analysis comes into play, which is the trading channel. And we already have the exact target. It's this line. Therefore, we know exactly where to look for for the uh, a probable move or lower or lower. That would be the first like, you know, possible. I wouldn't say possible because if, if if Nasdaq starts turning around instantly, yeah, Bitcoin will go with it. Right. And it'll break rules that that's you know, that, that could easily happen, which is why it's good to keep an eye on uh, this ticker right here. NQ1 exclamation. That's the uh, that's the 100 E mini futures for Nasdaq composite. However, I can literally put a circle right here and I could say, you know, go down to the five minute chart. It's probably going to hit in this area. Okay, extreme likelihood. Are we, are we following how we can build logic on top of logic, right? So the more contingencies you stack on top, the higher the Lego, you know, stack goes, you know, if you if you make too many contingencies upon contingencies, well, if this, then that, if this, then that, then it starts to topple over. You can't do too many. But just connecting two quick dots, the probability stay pretty firm. It's if this, then that. So because higher low structure is broken, then it's going to make a lower low. So based off that, contingency, which we don't know, it hasn't come true yet. So that's a contingency, essentially, with the statistical likelihood. We could build another contingency on top of that saying, well, because of that, that because A is true, then B is another if then, then that state, if then, or it's an if, if then statement, if then, then that, then if it is going to break down based off of A, then B says it's going to at least hit this line. So you can usually stay safe with uh, two to three layers of if then, then that type, if then statements, right? Are we following along? But then you don't want to try making guesses for the bull run of 2024 based like if you just keep doing this for days on and there, you know, hour chart after hour chart. You can't do that into infinity and guess uh, with uh, any type of certainty where things are going to be in 2024. Right. You can only do like two to three, maybe four high. Um, hopefully I'm making sense here. Therefore, in the very, very short term time frame, I, I wouldn't look for anything magical to happen until 28. 28A is hit. That would be the first area where I would even consider a bounce happening. I don't see a bounce happening right here. Doesn't matter if there's a horizontal here. It's it's the higher low structure with mixed with this structure. 28 is very, very likely going to be hit. Does that make sense? Now, because Bitcoin is likely going to poke its head down, what is the chart that moves inverse to Bitcoin? When Bitcoin goes down, this chart goes up. And you can say the inverse chart of Bitcoin, sure, that, that's true too. Tether dominance. So because it looks like Bitcoin is going to poke its head down, I would assume that tether dominance is poised to poke its head up. 
So we can use this not as another if then contingency statement, but rather in the two Legos that we've stacked on each other of logic, we can use the US, uh, the tether dominance chart to essentially try to confirm that, to give us more, I guess, meat um, with the analysis to another layer of confirmation or confidence, right? So let's go to the tether dominance chart if I cannot uh, throw around my mouse here. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Costas Verdes with the number two afterward. The link to my Discord community is in the description of my sections where you can jump on and ask me questions directly live with a camera and microphone on uh, five to six times a week. And if online communities are not your thing, but you want exclusive content above and beyond what I offer for YouTube, go ahead and click the join button that's right below this video. Another quick video pop up describing your options to you. So let's take a look at to the dominance. Remember what I said, it should be poised to poke its head up, right? Well, what does that look like to you? Looks poised to poke its head up. It's got a low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low structure. It kind of barely broke it there. It's kind of tied, but it, but it's, this has a little range here. It's consolidating under a resistance. That means it's poised to bump, bump its head up. Will it really race up? I don't know, but it could. And that's why, and that also helps uh, the idea that on the Bitcoin chart, I said this area or lower. I'm not guaranteeing it's going to bounce there. Rather, the first opportunity that I would look for a possible bounce is 28.8. However, I wouldn't bet the bank on it bouncing there because it could easily want to come down and test this line. And, and so once it finally gets there, how are you going to be able to tell if, you know, how can you um, start telling if it's going to bounce or not? Well, obviously, when it, if it hits it and starts printing green candles, that's pretty obvious. However, a lot of times you'll see price go below the line, make a lower high, go below the line again and start fizzing out and then end up using that line as resistance. And that's how you can tell, shit, it's going to hit the next line down. That's usually how it works. The second most common way is it just tanks right through it. It just does, it just, it, it's, uh, here, I'll actually show you. Let me draw this out. Most common way that this kind of stuff happens is it wiggles down here, and when it, when it's, it's time to test this, it tests, it doesn't bounce perfectly like that. That would be an indication that it actually wants to, uh, come up if it does that. Uh, that's, that's good. However, uh, and again, I'm on the very small time frame charts. This is five minute chart. If it wiggles down here and it uses the, it, it finds support just below the line like this and does it again and makes a lower high, that's when you start thinking, uh-oh, it's gonna go at one of these times, it's gonna go below it and use that as resistance and then go down. And that is the point, um, not, not just right here, but about right there. After it uses that resistance and heads down, that's when you can, have an extremely high um, confidence level that it's going to hit the next structural um, line down. Am I making sense here? The second most common way that things bust through a line um, or break down through a line is it just uh, something like this. It comes down and finds support below the actual support line, makes a lower high, and then just busts through on the next time. That's, that's another way to do it. So these would be the two. Uh, if it is going to go below this line, that's usually how it works. But typically the inter the first interaction with price to a support line, if it goes below it, that's your first warning sign. Is that a death sentence? Absolutely not. It can, it can recover, especially if it starts making higher highs afterward, just a simple higher high, lower high or higher high, higher low type of structure. However, that's your first warning sign. And then when it makes a lower high, the next interaction with this will really start getting you um, a good feel for where it's going to go. Is it going to bounce or is it going to break down? So actually the very last time I interacted with this, it actually missed. Look, so it came down to the line and missed it as support, right? But then made a higher low. You see that? It actually made a higher low and this high is bigger, is higher than that high. Do You see that? And it's actually a different structure because this was coming up from below. So had, had this happened, so if you see something like this happen, but price came from up top, that actually increases the chance that it's going to go down. 
but it gets a little leeway when it's scooping out from the uh, bottom and it pierces above and it misses this. As long as you get a higher low, you do have a probability to the upside. It's a little bit different. You see what I'm saying? So this came from below and then that happened as opposed to if you see price come from way up high on the channel, like up here, price is doing something like this and falling down and it misses that as support, that would be a huge warning sign that you're going to make a lower low or, or a lower high, come back down, miss it again, lower high, and then wiggle all the way down. But this is coming from the bottom to the upside. And so it's a slightly different type of analysis. It wouldn't be such an, uh, a warning signal. However, it still is a slight warning signal that, uh oh, this is going to break down the head uh, lower, but the next low was higher. So we're, so again, we are using, because, you know, indi I'm not using in many indicators in this. It's two different types of structural analysis. So it's a little bit different uh, type of analysis because you already know my thoughts on uh, EMAs and RSI. We cover that extensively in the last video to which I'll link you at the end. But we're using, again, simple higher high or high low structure and these lines. So two different types of structural analysis, that's all we're looking at in order to understand from one moment to the other. We're working with the same top four probabilities. All we're trying to do is every time we look at the charts, you know, hopefully you're not staring at every minute candle, right? But if I look at the chart, you know, every four hours, how can I recalibrate the idea of which one is more likely than the other? And that's all we're doing in this, in this analysis. Um, is there anything notable? Anything else notable? Let's uh, take a look at the daily RSI. Let's follow up on that. Do we have a higher low confirmed yet on daily RSI? No, you don't. These lows are equidist, like they're they're at the same level. And so since it hasn't turned back up and made a new high, you, it's, this could just tank back down below. So you still don't have a higher low yet. This is not a low because it hasn't ticked up yet. It has to tick up to confirm that as a low. Are we seeing what I'm seeing here? You can't just say, oh, that's a higher low because it, um, because you don't know if it's going to do this. You don't know, right? You, so therefore, this is not even close to being confirmed as a higher low yet. It's in that area. And should Bitcoin bounce from here, especially that bottom of the point of control, as I showed you earlier, that could be the area where it does uh, confirm a higher low on daily RSI. But we still don't have that yet. So therefore, we don't have any type of edge for determining on the small term time frames if this is going to bounce. It actually is still pressure to the downside, right? Are we seeing that? And if, though, price can get a bounce from here and then head up and close a, you know, um, it, we get into the next daily candle and then the next day closes green. So we won't know until roughly Wednesday because Tuesday's candle would have to close green to confirm the daily RSI that I just showed you as a local low. So today's candle can be red, but it's got to you have a wick to the bottom. Tuesday's got to close green. And if Tuesday's close, close if bounce, if Bitcoin bounces from 28.8 on Monday and Tuesday closes green candle on the daily, then you'll have a higher low on the daily RSI. And then we could start greatly adjusting our tar our uh, top four probabilities that the uh, fourth most likely scenario might become the second most likely scenario for example so we probably won't have um a huge change up in our top four until wednesday's candle starts are we making sense so thinking of different time frames on when i can expect my analysis to change it would be the begin so it'd be tuesday at 8 p.m. New York time at the very earliest is when the fourth most probable, which is the bullish one, could become maybe the second most probable. But it cannot happen until then. Are we following here? How we're mixing time frames here and kind of um, uh, trying to anticipate how our analysis will evolve throughout here. All right, if you want to see that in-depth Joe Rogan long form type of uh, analysis, go ahead uh, on Bitcoin and how I uh, the from the clips that you saw at the beginning of the video, go ahead and click that video right here. And if you want to go ahead and check out uh, altcoin, how low it might go, uh, unbelievable it might be like Solana down to 22 or $12, go ahead and click this video right here because a lot of your altcoins are going to do the same and you just got typified worldwide. Peace.